Welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, appreciate you stopping by on today's video. The Challenger 2, you all know of my love of this main battle tank, but unfortunately, in the last several months, the tank has been going through some challenges, pardon the pun, so to speak, in regards to its identity. And it's quite upsetting to see the amount of information and misinformation that's going on about this tank's future. Now the Challenger 2 right now I would safely compare to that of a teenage boy trying to figure out what he wants to be in the future. Does he want to be a hardcore, you know, sports athlete? Does he want to be a punk rocker? Does he want to be a hipster? Really hard for him to determine. He's still learning and understanding his future, you know? And that is what's happening with this tank right now. And unfortunately, its own family members, like the teenager's mother and father, are persuading it to go one way or the other way or, or jading his thoughts as to what it should really be. And unfortunately... This is really, really starting to hit the image of Challenger 2. A lot of you will disagree with me when I say this, but it is the greatest main battle tank on the planet. Yes, I understand that in its technological advancements, it has been left somewhat in the Stone Age. It's still running with that old power pack. It's still running with that 120mm, although still very formidable, rifled gun. And of course, some of the other... I would say shortfalls of the tank overall, but it is still an extremely formidable main battle tank, and I think a lot of people around the world need to realize that. Now, yes, I am biased. Of course I'm biased. I've served alongside this main battle tank, and I have a lot of people who I know uh, who love upon this vehicle and have had a huge amount of respect for it. But I will admit it requires some upgrades, but we hear so much misinformation about what's going on with this tank. It's going to get a new pack, it's going to get a 130mm gun from Ryan Metal. it's going to get this new defense package like Black Knight, it's going to get all these different upgrades and all these different changes, but look, we're still looking at Challenger 2s in pretty much the same form that they've always been in, other than this one has Berlin camouflage on top of it, which by the way looks beautiful. There's not much else going on. In terms of an actual contributing upgrade that will 110% be committed to this tank, we are still being somewhat left in the dark. And the misinformation that's going on and the, I guess, opinions that are going on in the media are rather interesting. So Matt, I've heard this all before, what's the point of this video? Well, it seems as though the media is going a little crazy in regards to their own take as to finding out information about the future of this main battle tank and... Lo and behold, Forbes has decided to create an article. This article was written by David Axe, he's an aerospace and defense uh, contributor and contributor to Forbes magazine, I guess. And the statement of the uh, title of this particular article is British Army German Tanks. London might not like it, but it might need to buy Leopard 2s. Yes, exactly what I was thinking, and I know what's running through your head as you listen to that particular statement. I will quote from this particular article, which I will link in the description box below. It says, The British Army needs new main battle tanks. Bad. Realistically, it has two options. Rebuild some of the roughly 220 aging, quote, obsolete Challenger 2s, or buy German. Or buy German. It's, it's already going off to a rough start. The better choice is clear, apparently, according to one analyst. German tanks would enter service faster and in the long run be cheaper than the British tanks would be. Analysts Jack Watling and Nick Reynolds wrote in a new study for the Royal United Services Institute in London. In early 2000s, the Army bought the 424 Challenger 2 tanks from the manufacturer of Vickers Defence Systems. At the same time, the service bought all the spares it needed. That and the lack of major export customers, which a man bought 38 of the tanks, meant Vickers had no reason to maintain the production line. So the consideration of Leopard 2s apparently is now where we're looking at going. The cold production line effectively orphaned Challenger 2 fleets. There was no efficient way to army upgrade the 72-ton four-person tank. As the Challenger 2 became more out of date, the army steadily cut back on force levels until just half the vehicles were left. Today, the Challenger 2, with its rifled 120mm gun and old electronics, is an outlier, quote, in NATO. America's M1A 2s and Leopard 2s variants from Germany that has sold no fewer than 15 NATO allied armies have the latest computers, networking gear, plus smoothbore guns with modern ammunition. Quote, the CR2 has reached the end of the road, unquote, Watling and Reynolds wrote. Quote, if the UK is to retain a main battle tank capability, it must modernize its fleet, unquote. The United States, as a matter of policy, doesn't export the latest version of the M1. That leaves the Leopard 2 as the only realistic alternative to Challenger 3, a totally rebuilt Challenger 2 that the British Army has been considering for a few years now. 
The Leopard 2 is a right tank, according to Watling and Reynolds, quote, If the UK wants a competitive armour capability between now and 2040, the Leopard 2 is inequivocally the more assured and, in the long run, cheaper option, unquote. Quote, Procuring Leopard 2s will come at a much higher initial cost than pursuing Challenger 3, unquote. However, the plentiful supply of spare parts and increased reliability of highly refined designs means the Leopard 2 is projected to be cheaper than the CR3 through the life of the vehicle. The vehicles could be brought into service very quickly since the production line is open and there are a number of Leopard 2s available for purchase, making, basically, <laughs> an in-service date of 2025 more realistic, Watland and Reynolds added. The Leopard 2 is less risky for the United Kingdom because its existing market for spares, upgrades and other support is huge. The British Leopards would be just a small portion of the global fleet of thousands of vehicles. London would just need to order 150 Leopard 2s to make the local production commercially viable. By Watling and Reynolds estimate, estimates, the UK government would need to order 300 Challenger 3s, possibly around $2.7 billion, in order for the manufacturer to make a profit. That scores more tanks than the British Army's plans to maintain, even in the best case scenario. Switching to Leopard 2 could come at a cost, of course. Quote, what would the UK lose with Leopard 2 is the generation of manufacturing expertise and intellectual property. This should not be blown out of proportion. In this instance, the KMW, Leopard 2's manufacturer, has said it will establish a factory in the UK and integrate UK components through a British company, which will be able to develop further technical innovations as other international users have." Unquote. Industrial woes would deter London from buying the only tank that can keep the British Army in heavy armour business. Challenger 3 would, quote, be a costly disaster, leaving the British Army with a small number of uncompetitive vehicles delivered late at inflated prices, unquote. Well, there you have it. Our answer to replacing or working with the Challenger 2 is to just go buy another tank. Well, I don't know what you guys think about this, but I think this kind of idea is absolute craziness. Total and utter crazy. It's, it's insane to me that this is even an idea. We have a perfectly good tank that requires some love, that has been neglected, unfortunately, by its government to be a vehicle that can somewhat get by but isn't really required. May I add that this vehicle served in the Iraq war very, very formidably, with a number of kills doing very well. And to say that it should just be disregarded for a completely different platform to save money is an embarrassment to this tank and the crews that have operated it. We should have some pride as a nation and understand that copping out on a vehicle that's done so much work for the British Army for so long and for those who have operated it, designed it, trained on it, still supply whatever else is needed for in terms of support, we should respect the fact that the tank is still doing what it needs to do and we should also respect the fact that, yes, although it may be cheaper or somewhat, you know, easier to maintain a different tank, is that the way we should go? Should we give up on British engineering and British service support to a platform like this because it's just the easier route? And unfortunately, that's the way things are nowadays, and it, it breaks my heart because I respect this tank so much. And I really do feel like it just needs a good overhaul. It needs some refurbishment. We know the packages exist. We know there are options for this tank to be brought into the new world of armored fighting vehicles and main battle tanks of today. When they talk about the Abrams and the Leopard 2, do you really think that the Leopard 2 and the Abrams did not have their own upgrade packages, their own installments of completely new operating systems, whether it be the guns, or the ammunition, or the fire control systems, there's a ton of work that's gone into those tanks. If I could compare the list of variants between the M1 and the Leopard 1 and the Leopard 2 and the M1A2, it'd be huge. It would be absolutely massive. There's tons of upgrade packages, tons of programs that have gone into those armored vehicles that have got them where they are today. It doesn't happen overnight. But Challenger 2 has never been given any of those options. It's been left in the dark for a long time, and it's time for it to get these upgrades that we keep telling it that it's going to get. I mean, for crying out loud, they had a bunch of British soldiers asked, what would you like from the tank? They put ladders on the back of it, all these really cool, innovative ideas that were just basically concepts. What happened? Nothing. It just got put on a side table. Now, I know a lot of the Challenger 2 enthusiasts out there are probably screaming at the screen right now saying, Matt, there are upgrades coming, there has upgrades been happening. Yes, but not enough to affect the opinion of the global 
armored world. And not enough is being said to say that this tank still has a formidable future. And that's what I'm trying to say here, guys. When articles like this come out, it just once again reinforces the misinformation about what the Challenger 2 is doing. I honestly, at this point, have no idea what's going on with the tank anymore because there's so many conflicting reports. Now, the great thing is that the British uh, military and the UK government has just committed a huge amount of money to military budget, which is fantastic. And Boris Johnson, you know, I'm not a political mind, I can't talk politics, but to see the British Army and the British Armed Forces getting a huge amount of, you know, injection of financial support... This is good news for the Challenger 2. And there's been some stupid reports out there about, you know, getting rid of armor. You know, I did a video about it myself that the UK was attempting to potentially get rid of the Challenger 2, which we all knew was a farce and wasn't going to happen. Um, but that's the kind of thing that's happening right now. And this is the kind of information that's being spread about these tanks. And they're looking at discussing options about buying Leopard 2s. Come on, guys. Where are we at here? Let's be realistic here. Stick with what we have. A bloody good tank that needs a good overhaul, some love, and some commitment from its government. And hopefully, from the money that is coming out from the UK, we're going to see it coming. And as I said, I'm not a subject matter expert. I am only putting on my own personal opinion. This is not reference. It's not there for educational training needs or whatever else. Because I'm not part of the UK military anymore. I'm a serving member of the Canadian Armed Forces. But... I respect this tank, its crews, those who have served on it, those who have died upon it, okay? Those who have sacrificed their lives within this vehicle and on this vehicle and supporting this vehicle. I respect that more than anything. And to say that we're just going to give up on it because it's older and it's going to cost us a little bit more money and go to another main battle tank is ridiculous. And if you disagree, well, man, go have a conversation with some of the crews of this tank and we'll have another chat. Anyway, thank you again, everyone, for... Uh, stopping by on today's video i hope you enjoyed uh, feel free to leave me a like and i'd love to hear your opinion on this one because i think it's going to touch a few nerves for sure and um, let me know in the comment section below if you want to uh you know follow my channel uh, you can click on the little bell by the subscribe button to be notified of any upcoming content in the future you can also come check out my discord channel my facebook and if you want to support my channel um you can go check out my PayPal or my Patreon account. And thank you to everyone who's been um, supporting me financially on my channel. It really does mean a lot to me. So thank you so much for your contributions to supporting financially on my channel. It really does mean a lot. Um, and I hope to see you on the next video, everyone. All the best. Bye-bye.